Zemo! And welcome to the round three feature match of the Yugi Tuber Grand Championship 2016 Autumn Qualifier. In this match, we have Ben in the blue playing Yang Zings going up against Sebastian in the red representing Infernoid. And for this match's Pegasus rule, we have a really old card that I think is going to have a really interesting effect in this match, Death's Counterblow, where any monster that makes a direct attack is going to be destroyed after the damage is calculated. And with us for this feature match, we have once again, Yugi Mation. You guys are getting very bored of my voice so far. <laughs> and I don't care. What's going on, everybody? This is Yugi Mation coming at you again with another uh, very interesting match along with my amazing counterpart, Simo. We've got some and... electrifying commentary for you today. We got that Max C on that one for one. It's getting really intense in here. Oh my god, that, that one for one. Let's let's see the shenanigans that's going to be happening out now. We have Mr. Deck himself getting that plus. Uh, well, I wouldn't really say plus one. Uh, be for the maxi because you still have to use it. I, would I guess not say a plus whatsoever. The only person that got a one for one here is Ben because he got a one for one off that max. <laughs> exactly, and now we have that uh, Decatron that is uh, an infinitely whatever he just dumped because I don't understand names of these Infernoid monsters. He dumped a Deviati, which is really good because for right now, Ben is actually using his Jiaotu and he's using the effect, which it looks like Sebastian's just going to go ahead and sacrifice the, or rather tribute, the Decatron to negate and destroy the Jiaotu because, or rather banish the Jiaotu actually, because uh, the Decatron is actually considered to be Deviati since it dumped it. And now Ben is pretty much screwed because he only has one card in his hand and a couple back row. That's right, because uh, the Deviati does banish it instead of destroying it and sending it to the graveyard. Thus, that poor little black Jiaotu is not going to be able to get his effect. Oh, boo! <laughs> uh, Yang Zings can't go to grave because they got destroyed. Oh, well, moving and, on. And why that's doubly good is because now Deviati can just summon itself back out since Sebastian has the cards to be able to just wipe all of Ben's back row, literally leaving him with only one card. And it looks like Sebastian's going to flip the Void Seer to protect the Deviati to ensure that it's going to resolve through that breakthrough skill. So now Ben has to <laughs> ben has to find a way, and a Raiden on top of it. I was going to say he has to find a way to deal with the Deviati, but now he has a Raiden too. So uh, things are not looking good for Ben here early on. We have Aaron Yeager coming down to the field and Millen too. With his double, uh, was it, 3D maneuver gear that he got there on his legs. <laughs> Seriously, when, when Raiden came out, that's all I thought about. I was like, this guy is exactly, uh, was it, like, any one of the writers from uh, Attack on Titan. It's like, I, he looks exactly like him. It's funny because I didn't think exactly that, but I always thought the leg gear was representative of something. So maybe that's what I was thinking sublimate, or subconsciously. I would definitely agree. <laughs> So Ben's just passing by setting a card. Sebastian just getting all the answers with the burial from a different dimension off the top, meaning he can put three of his Infernoids back, and he basically can just resummon Deviati once again to be able to just go ahead and wipe that back row away. This pro plays for days is seriously something that I definitely love seeing because I love top decking uh, an Imperial from the different dimension, milling more with Raiden just so we can, you know, start sacking opponents left and right. <laughs> I was going to say, are you going to say pro plays are equivocal to that of sacking? Because I don't know. I think there might be a strong difference here. I don't think so. <laughs> it's all It's all luck. <laughs> Who knew that he was going to draw that barrel from a different dimension as soon as he uh, went to his turn? It's like, no, no one kind of guessed that one. Now, interestingly enough, though, rather than going for uh, Deviati, he's actually going for the Sight Samas, and he tributes off the Raiden to be able to uh, banish the Chi Wen, making it so that it won't be able to trigger in case any of the Yang Zings gets destroyed, summoning another Sight Samas, and now I'm guessing he could go for 5,200 damage, but it looks like he's overlaying... Um, don't know what he's going to go for here. He could... Oh, Flare Metal. Okay. My goodness. That's actually really good because the thing is with Death's Counter Blow um, is that if Flare Metal attacks, it's not going to be destroyed since it can't be destroyed by card effects. So it actually is a way to, that he figured out to work around the Pegasus rule that actually is going to work to his favor and now he's not going to lose a monster. That's a sneaky deaky move right there. I wouldn't have thought of anything like that. I would have just 
attacked for massive damage and lost both my monsters and cried because probably uh, Ben was going to be able to OTK me the next turn. But that's just me. Well, Death's Counterblow actually benefits both of these decks in their own way, because Yang Zing, it's going to destroy them after they attack, so they can trigger and, you know, just summon more Yang Zings, or even, like, Chi Wen and Grave and stuff. And Infernoids kind of don't mind being in the Grave, because then they can just resummon themselves anyway. I mean, they'd rather be that than Banish, so... It's not, like, out of all the decks that could possibly have, like, this card for their matchup, these are pretty two... These are two decks that are pretty well off. The awkward silence on my part. <laughs> I have no additional comments or rebuttal or anything to okay. back up what you just said. So I'm just going to continue watching this this awesome duel okay. so far. But uh, going along what you said with the uh, um, the Pegasus Challenge card already being active and then the Yang Zines, who doesn't love infinitely free attacks, right? Especially since if you have like all your uh, uh, Yang Zines up in uh, face-up attack position, they attack, do some damage, die... And then, of course, you'll be able to get more monsters out of it. Very, very clever in uh, dealing with uh, the Pegasus card right here. And I'm going to slowly back away from my mic so you guys don't hear me anymore. Well, I think it was really funny that uh, Ben used the Forbidden Lance on the Flare Metal because when he hit, when Sebastian attacked the set monster, they both had equal stats. So it's kind of odd that Sebastian... like, Because it's kind of a given that if it's anything that's in defense... Like, the chances of it being a Yang Zing with 2k, it's pretty likely. So Sebastian could have attacked, and then he could have attacked directly with Flare Metal and not had it lose to, you know, whatever. Rather, he just chose to go ahead and just um, negate it with Deviati anyway. It was just kind of weird how he just chose the attack order on there. But the Dark Hole on the Breakthrough Skilled Flare Metal is really good, and that can actually... Um, at least it puts uh, Ben somewhat back into it, and that's like the... The desperate, don't kill me this turn, Max C getting dropped in the draw phase right there. <laughs> but Sebastian, don't give a damn. He's he's going to go ham right now. Dark Hole, Max C, it don't matter. He's he's going for the kill right now. Round winning kill so coming in. So there's the Sight Samas getting summoned. Ben's going to draw one. Now, does Sebastian have enough resources? Oh, yeah, here's the Lila. That's it. <laughs> That's game. <laughs> it's easy peasy, guys. Hey, you never know, man. Tristan could be running like, or not Tristan, I just called him Tristan because of the picture. Ben. Right. <laughs> <laughs> ben could be running Gores or something. You know, some next level tech right there. Never Absolutely. know. Could be the, the random swift Scarecrow that we never see anymore. Of course. So going into game two, you know, Ben just getting off to another slow start just setting. I mean, I know it's Yang Zing, but he really needed to get that, you know, that Jiaotu play just live early just to be able to to deal with anything that Sebastian's going to throw at him because now Sebastian gets an extra card and yeah, it's going to be interesting. I mean, Ben even opted to go first. So I think he was really banking on getting that Jiao too. Charge of the light brigade coming in. Let's mill you. some I cards out the decks. I love the artwork on charge. It is like so awesome. I mean, it's a white wolf charging and breaking through glass and there's a bunch of light behind him. Who wouldn't love that? <laughs> So Sebastian getting the Lila, he's going to upstart for another card, and of course it wouldn't be Infernoids without their their unofficial card reasoning. Oh, but the Maxi gets dropped down on the Quicks. Doesn't matter, because uh, if this reasoning is allowed to go off, uh, we will see some quite devastating plays being happening with uh, Sebastian's part. Well, it's kind of precarious, because it's like, if he calls the reasoning correctly, then he's not going to get any draws off of Maxi, which is kind of funny. But if he calls it wrong, then he's still going to get the draw. So it's like, if that reasoning gets... He, he almost he wants to actually make sure that the reasoning gets called correctly. And the chat's actually covered up, but what was the... Oh, obviously it was wrong because uh, the Lila yeah. got special summon. I was going to say, our chat's covered up, but obviously it was wrong because uh, Lila would not be hitting the field had that not been the case. Probably going to say that Ben called a 1 because you typically want to call Ooh. 1. And yeah, um, <laughs> double uh, reasoning, ladies and gentlemen, we're, uh, we're done here. Let's get the reasoning up in this. Seriously, guys. But like I was saying, you typically want to call one against the Inferno player just because Decatron is the best choice. There's a Decatron right there. Uh, doesn't look like Sebastian's going into grave to summon it. Yeah. So it looks like Ben called the one on that one. I mean, I'd probably call level zero. <laughs> Because that's that, just, that's next level right there. That's next level right there. In fact, it's no level because it doesn't have a level. 
So Sebastian, since he was under Max C, just decided to summon a second Lila and pass, which is actually a really funny play because now he's just going to mill six in the end phase. <laughs> <laughs> Loading up that grave for the next turn of a cannon that we're going to be getting. I don't know if you saw, but that grave is pretty scary. I mean, he dumped a lot of good cards with those two reasonings. <laughs> it is loaded. And so there's a set Suwani. Now, Suwani can go ahead and take care of one of the Lylas. And he has Mask Chameleon. Okay. But why would you want to do that? I smell a Crimson Blader, if anyone still ran it. I, you know what? That would actually be like the perfect answer here because then Sebastian, oh my God, he actually runs Crimson. <laughs> I am psychic. I am psychic. This, this, this is, this is unbelievable. I well, actually that, called something right. I never that, do that. I think oh, wait a in second. all of the commentaries we've done, that might be the first one. That might be actually be the first one. But, uh, Looking back to last year's uh, Yu YouTuber Grand Championship Tournament, I think the only reason why I got so far is because I called the right card when I uh, was mind crushed both Galactigod <laughs> and I really can't remember who I was playing, but it was uh, a Yosenju uh, matchup. And you and called, I called the Sujik? And I called the Sujik. My goodness. It still oh resonates with me. The flashback. Uh, the good times. Flashback Friday, flashback Friday. But um, no, this is huge because that Crimson Blader is going to basically make it so that Sebastian cannot play Yu-Gi-Oh this turn. I mean, he can't summon any of the Infernoids in his grave. Um, the thing is, unfortunately, that he had the Decatron so that now the uh, Crimson Blader gets shuffled back into the extra deck. But the effect still lingers, meaning that Sebastian's not going to be able to go off this turn, which is something that's just really good about Crimson Blader altogether. Like that really bad smell at locals from the one player we all know that effect lingers. We all know him. Mm. <laughs> no one's going to list names, but we know him. Now, Sebastian also summoned an Entra in defense mode. I don't know exactly why. Maybe he just wanted to just get more Infernoids on the board for like... Just to beat us. I don't know. It just seems like a really odd play. I and mean, he attacked with the Lila. gets destroyed by Death's Counter Blow. Maybe he wanted to make more room to be able to summon more Infernoids. But the level count was still low enough that he could have summoned the Petrulia. So, that's really odd. I'm not, oh, wait, 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 wait. That Decatron actually is not the same level as what he dumped. So, right. he might have actually been at 8. Oh, no. <laughs> he, can go above, he can go above that, though. I don't know. He was paying weird. attention. Yeah. Not like us. I mean... Oh, absolutely. I'm spinning around <laughs> in my chair right now. You guys don't know. I'm having a grand old time over here. So that's Suwani going to come down. It looks like it's going to attack the Decatron, but Decatron's going to tribute itself off to banish the Suwani in Grave. So then Sebastian's going to lose the Petrulia to the Suwani instead. It's only going to take a little bit of damage. Um, you know, Ben still has, I mean, I don't know. It depends what Ben has in his backer right now, because if that's, like, an Iron Wall, the he's in really path. good shape. Or a Yang's, well, I um, mean, that, that wouldn't have really done anything, because he doesn't have enough. Creation, I think, is what you're thinking. Okay, there we go. See? I don't know names. <laughs> I let Alex do my talking. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell me that was the Voldemort laugh. That was the Voldemort That was the Voldemort Oh, my goodness. I should end this call right now. And Torrential says, what's up? Sebastian's going to use the Void Seer, though, to protect what I'm going to assume he's going to protect the Sight Samas on this one. Woohoo, countered. Yeah, which Suwani's still going to trigger, I believe. Hashtag so Instagram. We'll I mean, I think it depends because. Finish your No, thought. I think. No, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know, I was, I'm just curious what the follow-up play is going to be here. Because we both haven't seen this, obviously. We, mm, I see that little nope. CMO name in the corner. I mean, we, <laughs> we haven't seen this. Not at all. So the Chi Wen comes out now. And now Sebastian's going to go digging into his grave again, or his second deck. Grab your shovels, kitties, because we're going digging. So now the Atundle... So now he's going to attack the Chi Wen. And so now he's going to get to summon yet another Yang Zing. See, now, okay, what would be really smart if Sebastian did is that whatever Ben summons, if he just ended his battle phase and then just banished it with the Sight Samas because 
then it won't trigger anything like that. And then, I mean, it's kind of puts him in a good place. And then he can also banish the Chi Wen out of the grave with like a Tundle or Saitsamas then. And that looks like exactly what he's going to do. So that's cool. My goodness. That Yang Xing provided no defense. <laughs> I mean, it did provide some defense because, I mean, uh, Ben didn't get, you know, smacked by a Tundle, so. Go yeah, but then the Tundle would have died, but who cares because 23 cards left in Grave, assuming a lot of them, I don't know, are Infernoid cards. Well, uh, and yeah. a Tundle's 2,800, so it's like Sebastian can afford to just have that thing die. Oh, absolutely. If it was like 500 or 1,000, uh, maybe I'd want to keep it alive. See that face of Decree? Hey, yeah. I dec- feel too strong. <laughs> channeling your inner Cali effect there exactly Cali where are you I need you so now Ben I don't know this might be a desperate play because Ben summoning the Pulau and just crashing into Sight Samas to just hopefully get out something I think he wants to trigger the Chi Wen here it's always the Jato they always go for Jato that's the that's the number one dank play right there well, the best thing is, is that Ben's actually going to get it off this time because there's no way that Sebastian can stop it. Exactly. There's no, uh, <laughs> there's no hidden we're... Deviati this time. We're going to see that, that glorious Boxia coming in, shuffling some Infernoids back into the deck, I'm pretty sure. Um, well, he could go into Crimson Blader again. Yeah, main phase two, let's do that. Oh, wait, yeah. Never mind. Let's think. It's okay. I am the one that thought you could galaxy cycle in an, uh, an Imperial <laughs> Iron Wall, so. <laughs> it's not the, first never time. Forget. not the first time. Not the never first time. Never forgetty. Never forget. So Boxia coming down. It's going to shuffle. Or actually, no. Uh, Sebastian's going to chain what looks like both the Saitsamas and the Atundal to get rid of some of the Yang Zings in uh, Ben's grave, which is really good because it just lessens how powerful Yang Zing path could be if Ben happens to just draw it. I completely and forgot. And also put back in grave too. I completely forgot they had their quick effects to tribute and banish, and especially getting yeah. that she went out of the grave. Uh, no more if uh, that Boxia dies, get a free uh, defense. Yeah, but you know Ben kind of it, he's somewhat turned it around. I mean Sebastian does have still a grave full of cards, so we'll oh see absolutely. What happens. Oh, and he just rips burial from a different dimension okay. yeah, again. Yeah, sure. I love so, it. Let's, yeah. let's let's just do that. <laughs> As I said in in last round, in last uh. Last game. I just love top decking the burials because that's freaking sacked pro plays. And yes, they are the same. That's just so good. Like, there's a reason that card's at one. That's all I have to say. <laughs> I just wanted it back at two or more because I ran Skull Servants and, and I didn't even <laughs> think of the consequences of Infernoroids having it. I didn't think of the consequences of, a, of an actual competitively viable deck, but... There's always the butt. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah. Budget player for life. Budget player always. Budget players for life. And and Olynthia would be proud to have Burial at two or three for Skull Servants. We can I just know. give that shout out right there. <laughs> um, this, this is looking really bad now for Ben. I mean, Sebastian got the Atundal out, and then he also summoned out the Onuku. Anuku was going to wipe the board. Ben looked like he attempted to break through Skillet, but then he just tributed off the Onuku so that its effect would resolve, uh, negating the breakthrough skill, and now Boxia is going to die. <laughs> Bye-bye, Boxia. And then the thing is, it looks like he's banishing three, so I think he's just going to resummon Anuku and just attack for 5,800. Because we love winning, <laughs> obviously. And it doesn't matter that both of them are going to die because, uh, let's see, 58 minus 40. Yeah, I think that's game. That's game. No, <laughs> no, please don't rate me Max C this time. Well, that's going to do it for this round, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all so much for watching the video, and we will see you in round four. See you next!